I am starving. Wait a second. Oh, hey there, Internet. Matt and Overkill Woodcraft. Fun fact, I had to disassemble my sectional couch in my living room to get this shot. But you're not here for fun facts. You're here because you want to build this gate or one similar to it. I think they call it a baby safety pet gate deal. It might not be any of those names. It doesn't have to be. I, I don't discriminate. Or maybe you don't like this gate and you just want to know more about these saloon hinges. I haven't seen them used a whole lot and they can be kind of tricky to install. Uh, finally, maybe you just want to know more about this shaker style door and how to make one. This one's super solid and I made it out of typical big box lumber. Either way, you've come to the right place. But I've got to warn you, I did not do this the easy way and there's a few reasons for that. One, I didn't want a gate that just opens outwards because I felt like that would create some potentially awkward traffic over there. And two, even if I did have a gate that would open inward and outward, it was going to hit my handrail here because it's at the top of my flight of stairs. So I made this bumper plate is what I'm calling it because it stops the gate from bumping into the handrails. So stick around and that's all the stuff I'm gonna cover in this video right after I make myself some lunch. The kitchen's actually that way. Why was I going down there? Since this will end up being painted to match the wainscoting panels up there where my stairs are, I'm just gonna use this piece of Doug fir two by six that was here when I bought the house. And while it's surprisingly straight and flat for a piece of big box lumber, um, I'm still gonna take it through a quick milling process because OCD. And once I get done doing that, I'm just gonna rip it right down the middle and then I'll get both of my rails and styles out of this one piece, as well as the four and a half inch kind of uh, bumper plate that will help the gate clear the um, stair handrail or whatever. So <clears throat> I'm gonna get my quick rough measurements down and you know run it through the milling process and then I'll end up putting a date out down the middle. First up, I'm gonna cut that four and a half inch uh, wide piece that's gonna help serve as the bumper. Next up, I'll rip this right down the middle at two and a half. Last but not least is my little spacer that I will have um, for the hinges on the door. So now that I've got everything milled up, all of my components, I am going to go ahead and cut them to final length. So now that I have my frame components, I'm going to clamp them in place and keep them together and then I'm going to mark for one, my domino placement, and two, where I am going to stop my dado for when I put the panels in here. Also gives you a good opportunity just to check one last time for square. Although I trust that my tools were dialed in, it never hurts to, like I said, just check multiple times. Now, it all depends on how much, you know, you trust measurements and how much you trust whatever whatever it is you're using for your plans, whether it's just drawing it out or the computer or whatever the case may be. But me personally, I am a uh, ground truth type of maker, as in I like to actually put my hands on it and you know take my measurements based off that, check everything based off that. So now what I'm gonna do is mark out where my domino is going to end up in both these pieces. I wanna split the difference between uh, the edge and where my data is gonna be because I'm gonna use a bigger domino too. So, uh, you know, I've got about two inches there. So I'll split that difference and just go with one inch. And I'm just gonna mark that on all of my rails and styles. Now keep in mind too, you don't have to use dominoes here. Um, if you don't have a domino, you can use uh, dowels. And there's a lot of instances where I use dowels instead of my domino, where potentially this 
style is just a little too thin to accommodate a domino or if you're not worried about which side is going to be seen or you're a master at filling pocket holes, which I am not, uh, you can use pocket holes too. So don't need fancy tools. All right, so now for the dado that I will need inside of my rails and styles, this is my very scientific method for determining how big that dado needs to be. I am going to have two of these panels, all right? Of course, well, this one will be flipped. And because, as you can see, my panels that they, I didn't feel like buying an entire sheet of this and the panels that they had there weren't wide enough. So I'm gonna end up conjoining two of them, but obviously I need something in between it to, you know, give it a little bit of extra strength or, uh, you know, a spine, if you will. And that's why I'm just gonna use some leftover quarter inch ply that I have. So to determine my dado that I will need in here, I'm just gonna take these, kind of sandwich them together. And now I'm gonna take my square, whoops, man down. And that gives me just over a half inch is what I'll need for my dado. Something I did off camera was go ahead and mark out for where my dado was going to run down here and where my router bed will end up going. And then I went ahead and set up my fence and my bit. So as you can see, when it's flush up against the fence, the back part of this bit is gonna end up hitting the back part of my dado. You can probably also see this is a half inch bit and my dado is going to be just over a half inch. So I made sure to put an F on the face, even though it's a double faced door from each side, but I put an F on one side. So I'll go ahead and I'll run it through with that F facing out towards me first. Then I'll just bump my fence back just a tad and make that dado just a little wider. All right, so I've got the first pass done on both of my styles, and now it's time to hit these rails with the slightly more uh, sketchy pass. About perfect. And down here, also about perfect. So again, my F is facing me, and now I've got my router bit lined up, and yeah, it looks like I will just perfectly take the remainder off of what I need. Yep, no question about it, if that glove fits. Now I'm just going to clean up the inside of here and um, go ahead and plunge my dominoes. So now that my dominoes have been plunged and everything lines up perfectly, I need to determine how these panels are going to fit in there. And how these work is they have a little groove, all right? And it's just gonna line right up. So what I'll do to make sure I cut these perfectly is I've already got my half inch mark here from when I was determining where my data was gonna go to. All right, so then all is what I need to do is determine what my center is of this top rail, which is 34 and a half, so 17 and a quarter. So I've got my line marked here. So then I will take my panels, and I just like to eyeball it. I'm, I'm sure I could just determine the measurements. But again, if I can actually put hands on it and determine the measurements this way, that's kind of what I prefer to do. So now I'm just gonna draw a little line right here indicating where I need to rip these on my table saw. And then I'll repeat those for the panels that are going to go on the back side as well. And of course, the other thing I'll need to do is determine the measurements for the quarter inch piece of plywood that's gonna get sandwiched between both of these panels on each side. And I mean, that's just pretty simple. I'm just gonna measure that out to my, again, my half inch lines here. And I'm gonna go a half inch again, count for the dado. Here's a perfect example of why you always physically lay hands on inventory before just making plans, assuming that you have it. Uh, it was stacked deceivingly in my makeshift pile against the wall. And uh, yeah, so I don't have a whole piece of this that's big enough, but that's totally fine. I can just kind of do what I'm doing with the other pieces and uh, basically piecemeal it. 
I've already got my measurements marked out here for my dados, so not a huge deal. So this is definitely where labeling your pieces is very important. Just make sure that I have my both of my rights marked, along with which one will be the off cup side. And now I'm just gonna line up my table saw to my little notch here and cut both of these to their proper width. So I just did a quick dry fit and now I'm gonna go ahead and take it all apart, glue these panels together and start working on other stuff while that glue up is drying. For the sake of saving a little bit of time, I'm just gonna use the uh, Starbond accelerator and wood glue trick. So I'm just gonna put a ton of glue on here. Just kind of put it on there thin enough to where I don't have to go through and spread it around with my fingers. Oh, beard hair in there. Got a little tiny bead there. I'll probably end up going back and filling in the other side with a little bit of white wood filler or just paintable wood filler. Now I'm just gonna go with the corners here. Now I'm gonna try not to ruin this. And that star bond will hold it in place long enough for me to go ahead and get the other side prepped. Now I gotta make sure I get this lined up perfectly. Nice. Very nice. Again, I'm gonna put a little bead on here. More star bond. Lots of Starbond. In case you can't tell, I love Starbond. I'm just going to line this up. Now I'm just going to take a wet, a damp cloth after I put some weights on here and just clean up that little bead of glue. While I'm waiting on the glue up for those panels to dry, I'm just going to go ahead and do a couple other things. Uh, mainly put, do a couple countersunk holes in here. This is the uh, part that will attach to uh, the back of the door. This is what the hinges are going to attach onto. So this next bit of madness is what's going to allow me to attach this piece to the wall, which will again allow the gate to clear the handrail for my stairs. So I'll take this Forster bit and hog out a hole that's wide enough to allow my countersink to fit down there, which will then allow me to take a three inch screw and attach it to the wall. For whatever reason, my microphone stopped recording during this glue up so I've got a new one on the way that should be better quality. But my process for these glue ups is pretty straightforward. I do like to add a little bit of pre-glue, if you will, to the end grains on more porous woods and then just add a little bit in the mortises and some on the tenons. I don't add any to the dado because it's really not necessary if everything is nice and snug. But if it isn't for some reason, then you can either add a little bit of glue in there or you can just secure it with some pin nails and then go through and paint over it afterwards. You also don't need fancy corner clamps, although I will admit having them is a little bit of nice extra security, but as long as your components are all completely square, it should be fine. And then you don't need to apply a ton of pressure with the clamps either. I'm just using trigger clamps. And because I know my work surface is completely flat, I don't need calls or anything to hold it flat. I'll just use it as a reference. So the glue up went well and I have it out of the clamps and I want to just talk briefly about these hinges. They're your typical Amazon select hinges. Um, the instructions are terrible and there were no installation instructions that I could find online. I did find an, another video 
from a different company who makes higher quality hinges, but you know, this is a home build. I didn't want to spend a ton of money on it. So I followed their instructions on these hinges and keep in mind, I've never worked with these before, but their instructions said to install these hinges dead center of where they're going to be mounted. Um, and for me, I'm doing this backwards. Normally you would install these hinges on your door. And then in, once the door is on there, you install, would install it to uh, the wall. But because my wall isn't going to be um, big enough or really allow for the offset that I wanted between the hinges and the wall, that's why I have this little spacer piece right here. So I installed it to the spacer piece and basically they come with these little caps that allow you to adjust how strong the tension will be. And you just kind of pry it with a bar that allows you, man down, that allows you to get these uh, pieces out and make sure you don't lose them. And then you can adjust these without them having all the tension on them. So this is where that ground truth measurement comes into play that I'm, I was talking about. Nine times out of 10, you don't need the ground truth. You can just trust the measurements. But as you can see here, it doesn't line up exactly. So, you know, it's a good thing I went to do this and because I wanted to do my, my dry fit upstairs, install this completely and have it be all good to go and then just paint it. So what I'm going to do is just take my square here and kind of identify how much of a gap I need in order to get this completely flush with the door. So as you can see, here's my pre-existing center line. I need to pump this hinge this way, a quarter of an inch. So I'm just gonna take my square, put it up to that existing line and go a quarter of an inch past that. And mark that, there's my quarter of an inch. Then I'm gonna remove these and then I'll use this as my new line that I'll scribe all the way up and down and center this screw on this new line. You'll have to excuse the poor lighting but first step here is going to be, thankfully, it's not out of plumb when I set it up against the wall here. And then I'm going to start by securing my first screw. I'm actually going to mark all my pilot holes first. All right, so now that I've got those, I'm going to take my door, get it out of the way. And uh, I guess, first of all, see what I'm even drilling into. I should hit a stud here, and then I can just screw it right to the wall versus having to, you know, bore out some huge holes and put wall anchors in here. So let's find out. Yep, that'll be strong enough. All right, so I'm gonna attach this to the wall just with two screws to hold it in place. And so how I like to do this, I'm just gonna go top and middle. I get my screws all the way through here and just have them sticking through the other side just a tad. Feel those sticking out. Now from this side, I'm just gonna line it up, eyeball it. Try to get my door out of the way without moving my screws out of the way. I'm gonna take my plywood spacer supports up from here. Put these tension springs back in here. Now that I have my door temporarily secured, uh, it's working pretty well. Better than I imagined. Just had to mess around with the um, tension on those saloon hinges. A little bit but now that I've got this secured I'm going to show you the joy of working over somebody else's craftsmanship. I'm not sure how well you can see it but there's quite a gap up here and uh, I can assure you that's not because my door isn't square. My door is very square. Uh, the problem is the banister for my stairs is not square at all um, or not plumb I should say. That puts me about plumb. So I'm gonna taper this. I'm gonna mark my taper. I have a taper jig for my table saw and uh, cut that and, you know, kind of temporarily secure it into place, in place here and see how much of a gap it is and if it's uh, salvageable or not. Something else I did off camera was I fixed this mistake. 
Um, I originally had this support piece right here <laughs> the entire length and I totally forgot across the uh, span of a couple of days working on this project for you know a few hours here and a few hours there totally forgot I was supposed to cut this to fit between my baseboard and the upper trim I had to do the same thing with the bumper piece on the other side where uh, the latch will attach so I just cut this shorter and then just bumped my hinge up from here to here and I'll just fill in these holes before I paint it so not a huge deal it happens good news is my taper jig worked perfectly my my magnetic latch that I bought will actually still uh, cover this gap so I'm gonna go ahead and temporarily install this now and then secure my latch so the important part here is uh, making sure your door is definitely plumb and from there I can just make sure this bumper is plumb and of course make sure that it lines up nice and flush with the door so I'm gonna put a temporary line here use that as my reference I don't need to overdo it I'm just gonna put line right here and a line down there and now I can get my door out of the way and go ahead and secure this to the wall temporarily so I'm doing the same thing on this side as I did on the other side for securing it I am just going to get a couple holes started see hopefully my stud goes back this far um, if not I'll have to drill through here and put some anchors in the wall yeah, definitely stud back there. Awesome. So here's that magnetic latch I was referring to. I installed it the first time and the screws it came with were super cheap and caused kind of a violent catch when it closed. Just gonna let her fly. Oh. Okay, stuck the landing a little bit. But I think once I get that, uh, secured with some deeper screws it will not do that all right so i put some stronger screws in there we're going to give this a uh, go for a second try okay so it doesn't quite work in theory as far as it catching it i suppose it would be even more violent if it caught it and stopped it from swinging multiple times um, but it does work in the sense that at least you don't have to worry about locking it behind you. So for a kid or a dog, it would work really well. Now for us, there is the noise factor. Sometimes we're up at different hours. My wife gets up and works out early and she'll probably think that's too loud. So I'll probably just take this off and, uh, just get a different latch. That's, you know, the simple clothes behind. I think that'll probably work better for, uh, our application. So after taking off that latch and the rest of the hardware, I uh, went ahead and filled the holes where the latch was previously and, you know, finished the door and decided to just go with this simple latch instead. It's a lot quieter and it'll be years before we need anything that locks behind us or locks at all. So, and as you can see, this is plenty and plenty strong enough to, to do the job in the meantime. Well, there you have it. A shaker style saloon hinge baby safety pet gate deal. I'm still working on that name. But hey, I hope you enjoyed the video and learned a few things. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Do me a favor, like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Take it easy. I still need to make lunch. It's been days. Huh.